Okay, now things are going to get a bit more interesting because we're going to add a second oscillator. So I'm going to take the triangle output from the second Dixie, which is now set to VCO mode. Uh, we'll connect that to the zero scope and then to our VCA. And so that's the second Dixie. That's our first Dixie. And then, of course, we need scales to control Dixie 2. And uh, when you're using two oscillators, it's really important to tune them to each other. So luckily, Scales has a special tuning mode that you access by holding the interval button. And so you know you're in tuning mode when the interval button is flashing. And uh, I'm going to use a bit of help from Zeroscope again. XY mode. So we can exit interval, sorry, exit the tuning mode, and let's take a look at the other interval options. So if we press the interval button, uh, you can see that the interval is set to C right now, so there's effectively no interval. But we can select other notes to change the interval. And if you press the button again, it will offset the interval downwards instead of upwards. So now out B is below, uh, so Dixie 2 is now below uh, the first Dixie. Your config settings, uh, the out B config settings specifically, will affect how your inter interval behaves. So right now it's set to chromatic. Uh, so the interval is calculated based on semitones. If we switch this to diatonic, uh, the interval will be calculated based on degrees of the scale, so only your selected notes. So if we uh, have uh, an interval of two, one, two, it's going to count two degrees of the scale. Whereas if we were in chromatic mode, you can see it's, uh, it's still including the, the deselected note. So that's, uh, that's the difference between these two modes. Diatonic uh, generally will be more musical because it's always conforming to the notes that you have selected, so you'll never have notes outside of that. And that applies to the shift modes as well, uh, as we'll see once we get into that. Okay, now let's check out the different shift modes. So I'm going to take the X output from planar, connect that to channel A of quadrat so I get a bit of attenuation on the range and we'll connect that to the shift input here. So we'll bring up our two oscillators and you'll notice planar isn't doing anything right now and that's because we haven't selected a shift mode yet. So if we choose out A now uh, Planar is only shifting Dixie 1. If we choose out B, now it's only shifting uh, the second Dixie, and we can have both selected if we want. And we can combine this with any interval settings that we have. notice right now we're in diatonic mode so that means that the shift is being applied within degrees of this scale. If we switch that to pre it's going to apply the shift based on uh, the chromatic scale and then quantize it within the confines of the selected notes. With post the shift will be applied after uh, after chromatic quantization, but not, uh, it will not conform to the selected notes of the scale. So you, you'll notice we're getting 
notes that are outside of the selected notes. So because diatonic is conforming only to your selected notes, it will be the most predictable. The next shift mode that we have is root, and you'll notice when I select it, it deactivates the shift mode destinations as well as the quantization method. And so what shift mode root does is it transposes the root note of the scale via the shift input. And uh, this works really well with some kind of sequencer like Metropolis. Oh, there's one right now. So to make this more interesting though, I'm going to use the trig output from scales. I'm going to use the malt on the palette case here. So I can send that to two functions on Quadra. And then use one for my first Dixie and the other for the second Dixie. Next, we're going to take the clock output from Metropolis to the trigger input. So now Going on. Put, oh yeah. So now the clock output is passing triggers. And so to make this more interesting, we're going to take the gate output, use that to trigger function three on Quadra and use that to the pitch input. Actually, well, let's go through Quadrat first. So now we have function three on Quadra generating a melody via the pitch input. So that's pretty cool. But now what we want to do is modulate that root note using the pitch output from Metropolis into the shift input. And so we can change the notes that it gets shifted to. So now the notes that Metropolis is sending is transposing the selected notes of scales by changing the root note. And of course we can add an interval. So this is a really powerful method to set up progressions in your melodies. Now, scales can also modulate the selected scale via the shift input. So if we select that, let's uh, turn off the interval for now. So you can see the notes are changing. Modulating scale via the shift input will select only within the selected scale bank. So you can see which scale is being selected within that bank. So if you have a few scales that you want scales to choose from for a particular song that you're working on, you would want to save them within one bank, and then you can use your CV input to select from those scales. So the last thing to demonstrate in the config menu is dual mode. And what this does is lets you use the pitch and shift inputs as separate quantizers for the A and B outputs. So I have envelope three going into the pitch input. And then I have envelope four going into the shift input. And so you can see out A in red and out B in yellow. So you can have two independent quantizers uh, using the same scale. 